I've got Fox come through the post. So, I've, for all intents and purposes, I've now finished the second uh, model railway layout. So now it's time for me to tackle all the models that I've got up in my loft. Now these have been 20 years, some 15 years since since I bought them. Okay, there's there's four 132 scale Hawker Typhoons, uh, the Rebel kits. There's some 148 scale Typhoons, 148 scale Tempests, there's a 132 scale Spitfire, there's, there's, there's a few bits and pieces in there. There's a U-boat, there's a, there's a Hurricane. Anyway, I used to do a lot of modelling, loved my modelling. I don't mean sort of that sort of thing, I mean sort of making models, okay. Used to do it as a kid, loved it. Uh, always fell down on the painting, okay, always brush painting it never looked as good okay I wasn't a fantastic modeler my friend James is um, but I was always a, a fairly decent average modeler who enjoyed doing stuff but it was a painting that let me down I never had an airbrush always thought about it for many many years finally bit the bullet so I've been on Amazon the cheapest one that comes bundled with a reasonable looking compressor um, that apparently is quite good and does the job is this little Timber Tech. It was 107 quid delivered, um, presumably because of Brexit. This is me waving a knife because I'm a psycho. Presumably because of Brexit, prices have gone up. So I gather these were selling for about 60, 70 quid before. So I'm going to open it up and unbox it. I haven't been in here yet, so I've got absolutely no idea whether the, thing, the thing's in one piece or anything. I've never done any air, airbrushing. I've only ever sprayed with aerosols on a larger scale. Um, a friend James, who I mentioned, hopefully is going to come and teach me and give me some tips. He's, he's like fantastic at it, been doing it for decades. Um, so what you're going to what you're going to get from me if I decide to show you how to do it, how to use it, and so on, is how your average man in the street with no experience is able to progress as an airbrusher. So, it's already asking me, Varen Z Midlands of Frieden, which means are you satisfied? Or in Dutch, it's Bent U to Vreden. Okay, I don't know, I haven't even known it yet. So that's the first thing. Get those flaps open. So, now we've got the Timbertech Airbrush Compressor Set ABP STO5 instruction manual. Couple of big blocks of polystyrene. I'm going to turn it upside down now, just to fill it up. I mean, this was this was next day delivery, so it's pretty fantastic. Now, what's in the packaging? Let's have a look. Packed very neatly, nice and compact there. Get rid of that. So here's the compressor. Oh, it's got a good weight to it. This is a, a nice solid bit of kit. That weighs more than I was expecting when I picked it up. That's yeah, got a weighty thing. There we go. It's got a UK plug on the end. Good, good. Uh, DO9 infused. Yeah, can't pull that amp plug. So that's the compressor. Put that to one side for now. This is the box of bits. So we've got the airbrush in here. It's a dual action airbrush. Unwrap this. I'm not going to show you how to set it up because at the moment I don't know, I've never seen this before. This is just showing what's in there. So, a little plastic insert to keep things in place. We have got one compressor hose, so that will go on here on the bottom, I'm guessing. And then that will ultimately attach to the compressor. So, sorry, to the airbrush, so if you just like to come in here. So this is your, this is your airbrush, okay. It's a, a dual action one, which means you press down to open up the airflow. So it goes pshh, and then you pull it back to control the amount of paint that comes out. Okay, and then you can adjust the amount on the back here as well. 
the paint goes in there in that little cup, okay, and that just basically allows it to spray out. So you can spray it fine. If you go close, you can spray it wider if you stand back a bit. Obviously, the more you pull this back, the more that will come. In fact, come and, come and, come and get fairly close. As long as it can, is it in focus still? Okay, so at the moment, I can I can literally not move that button. Okay, so if I start undoing that, it gives me some movement, just a little bit. So there's only a little bit of paint come out. So if you're getting a load of overspray, there you go, that'll come even further. If you get a load of overspray or you're getting too much paint or not enough paint, you adjust it there. See, now it's going right back. See, I know that because I watched something on YouTube earlier. Right, so we have got a little screwy in bit. Nice, solid piece of metal, good weight to it. We have got mm, four little plastic pipettes, I think they're called. And these have got markings on 0 0.51, 1.5. Okay. We have got little nozzles, a 0.2 millimeter nozzle in their own tub, a 0.3 millimeter nozzle, and a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Now, let me see. Can you can you can you see those on there, or do I have to take them out? I'll take I'll take I'll take one out. I'll take 0.5 millimeter out. So that's my little 0.5 millimeter nozzle, which is going to presumably go on. Ah, oh, it's going to go on here instead of that one because there's already a nozzle on there. So, okay. And there's a needle in there. So you've got your different needles and your different nozzles. So, to pop him back in the box if you want to keep him in the right place. Then we have got, oh, look at that. Three needles, which I'll be able to leave on the floor in the park amongst all the other needles. Right, so that's a 0.2 millimeter needle. So obviously that's gonna go with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. There's a 0.3 and a 0.5. So let's just open one of those up. So it's, so it's a nice, nice little tube. There we go. So that's a thin piece of metal. There's a little cap on the end. See that? I don't know why I'm shutting one eye, but there you go. Wow. So very carefully with those, without sticking it through my hand. Wow, my eyes are going. I'm getting old. I better get an eye test soon. I'm quite excited to, to use this because I've never used one. I'm going to have to do lots of practice on things. Now, you've also got this little bit of metal here. What is that? Oh, that's like a mini spanner. Look at that. It's so sweet. Look at what did a mini spanner. So that's going to be quite nice to use somehow or other. And then there's a nice dense closed cell phone um, thing for the box to hold it all in. So it's not it's not a soft foam that you've got down the back here or like you'd have in a, say, a GoPro case or what have you. So it's gonna be nice and secure. It's a nice little presentation pack actually. Um, pop everything back in there. And I, I, think, I think it all looks really nicely presented. Okay. It looks like reasonable quality. Now, considering it's a cheapo um, and probably not the best quality in the world, it's not going to compare to what the mate James uses. Let's put it there. You know, it actually feels solid, it feels heavy. Um, I'm looking forward to playing with this this week. So let's pop that back into there. And then, so we've got that. So this, this, oh, I've got a fold up handle. Oh, look, look, little rubber suction cups. So that'll stick to the table nicely. Okay, so this is going to screw, like I say, onto there and then come out to your airbrush. Now, you've got your little, little bit here. I think that's your moisture trap. You've got your pressure gauge on top. This is your push to lock thing, what's that all about? I've got to look through the instructions before I go through this. And you've got your on off switch as well. 
So, I'm gonna leave the next bit for another day, because I've got to read the instructions first. RTF temp, it's RTFM time, I think. <laughs>